Hello everyone, Resin86 here, giving you another video, another replay, this time in the Comet. It's one of my favorite tanks in the game, if it isn't my favorite. Now this is a very, 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 very tier 8 match. The Comet can do very well in same tier battles, in tier 7 battles, but usually when it gets into tier 8, or even and even tier 9 battles, more so tier 9 battles, it tends to struggle a little, and a lot of people say that it needs premium ammo, a good stock of premium ammo to be used in those in those battles. So we come up to the middle here, we spot a Hellcat. What we're basically trying to do here is make sure that none of their fast tanks like the Hellcat, like the Stuart, they, that they can come around and flank our guys, our T-29 that's down at the south, uh, at the beach. And now the idea is just to stay here, use the Comet's awesome gun depression to make sure that nothing gets by. And we are also, that's the good part, we are also in position for any flanking maneuvers. <laughs> now, right now we've got nothing to shoot at, we haven't spotted anything, the team itself isn't advancing that much. But a Jagdtiger 88 pops up. He's quite a way away. He's, what, around about 400 meters? And this is the accuracy of that gun. We hit the ACMLE, but uh, the same idea. Look at that. Damage. And this is all regular AP. We can snipe weak spots from this range at over 250 meters and still manage to pen. Now we're pulling back because the the French TD was actually starting to look at us and starting to aim at us and our sixth sense did go off. Now we just pull back make sure we aren't visible anymore. We see a Yag Panther. we don't know if we hit, we hit him but we're spotted now again and there's a low here. He fires but that's the awesome mobility of the Comet. It can make other tanks miss. We fire again, and now the Lowe's armor is pretty good, but its lower Glacius is weak. And even at this distance, with the 140-something pen that the Comet has, it can pen its lower Glacius and reliably. Now there's an E25 here. He's been concentrating mostly on the other side. We get perfect shots at him. We lead our shot a little. We manage to track him, but before we can take our second, sh our third shot, the ISU manages to finish him off. Now, VK4502. He is very, very, very concentrated on the other side. No. But this Yag Panther. Oh, this is just too good to be true. The Yag Panther giving us his ass. This is the fast reload. It's just under three and a half seconds for every shot. And we managed to take that Yag Panther for over three quarters of his health. <laughs> now it's time to focus on this VK. Now we're spotted, but we're not completely sure what has spotted us. We're still too far away from the VK to be proxy spotted, but, oh, we're spotted again. And we're taking hits now. Ah, uh, it's the Hellcat. The Hellcat we we threw around into earlier. Now with that Hellcat there, we cannot advance on that PK. It is impossible. But we cannot shoot him either. He he's using his cover very well. He's a good player, but he gets shot by something we don't know what. And in a few seconds here, there it is. RAC48 finishes him off. Now this is a derpy thing for me. We are proxy spotted by the VK, but I haven't noticed that the Hellcat is dead until a few seconds later. But now we have free shots on the VK. But a Persian comes in to help him. We aim our shot at his lower glacius. That was a lucky shot into his lower glacius. And now the VK apparently has very good gun depression. This I did not expect. And his armor. It says 120 millimeters. It's actually 120 millimeters on the lower glacius as well. So with the penetration we have, it's very hard to actually pen his lower glacius. Now, 
I get rammed by him, which is probably not the best thing, but it manages to take out his tracks. And now, he misses his shot, and I just keep pummeling him on the sides. That's the idea. And now, hit his track, and we're down to 25, 24 hit points. Now I'm calling for help, because I really, really, really need the help. And the Nias comes in to aid us. Manages to track him. He, the VK stupidly shoots the IS instead of me. Now he's aiming at me, so I so I climb up this little hill, make sure he fires again, and now I'm backing off to take the next shot, and the RD finishes him off for us. Now it's 11 to 4. We have done over 2,500 damage. Now, we know that the ISU was on the little hill at D9, but there's also the Yag Panther that we almost finished off earlier. And there he is. Now we're going to go around, get a flanking shot on him, but we fail to take into account where the ISU is. And there he pops up, we stop, he takes a shot, and we're dead. The ISU had come down, I did not expect him. In hindsight, I should have probably expected the ISU to be there, but more so, the second I saw him, I should not have stopped. I should not have gone back. I should actually have charged him and made him try to make him rotate his gun instead of having a fixed shot. Now for the score screens, uh, we managed to get a Confederate medal and a Sniper medal, as well as 44,000 credits and uh, 5,200 XP on the times 3 we managed to fire 27 shots, 26 hit, which shows a great accuracy, but only 21 penetrated, which also shows the borderline mediocre penetration of the gun. But 21 out of 26 is pretty good. We did just under 2,700 damage. We took six hits, all six penetrated, obviously. The comet is not known for its armor. Uh, for a potential damage received of 2,000. We destroyed one enemy, but we managed to damage eight of them. Now, the comet, a lot of people say that uh, you need premium ammunition almost always to be able to be successful in this tank. But the thing is, the comet is made to be a flanker. It's It's got high mobility, it's got good, very good speed, it's got a great power-to-weight ratio, and it's meant to find those spots. It's a small tank as well. It's it's meant to find those openings, get through really quickly, kind of like the Cromwell in a way, and just take flanking shots and rear shots like we were doing. We posted up in the middle, and we got flanking shots on the Yak Tiger 88 and on the AMX AC-48 as well. We managed to take uh, rear shots at a Yak Panther that was just relocating. We managed to get rear shots on a VK-45 that was too distracted on another side of the map. Uh, this is a flanking tank. This is the tank you need to go around tanks, you need to carousel tanks, and take them down with your high rate of fire and decent DPM. And it's either damage them while a heavy distracts them from the front, or Distract them while the heavies also lay in the damage. Anyway guys, this has been awesome. This is my second video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like, subscribe if you, if you really liked it. And there is more to come, so stay tuned.